As you can see behind my table is my reveal wall. I sell all of my images uh, already printed and finished. You give me one camera with a good lens and you give me one girl, then I could make $3,000 a day. I've spent my life mastering my craft and I want to honour it by making beautiful portraits that are worth being paid and you're worth being paid. Hi, I'm Sue Bryce and today I would like to talk to you about my journey as a portrait photographer or my journey as a professional portrait photographer. Something that comes up for me over and over again, both for myself, which I had to work through, and now for the many students that I have, is comparing yourself to others, especially now that we live in an online world. So I've been shooting since 19... 89 and obviously the first half of my career had no Facebook, no web, no World Wide Web where anybody at any time could search me, look up my work, uh, go to my personal page and comment their private thoughts on my page publicly. Now we seem to have this blessing and this curse and so I have a lot of of experience and philosophy around this subject and so this is where I feel really strongly about talking to photographers about the journey of where you are and where you're going. So one of the hardest things is the comparison of self to others and it's a very natural human emotion of the human ego to contrast and compare. In fact the human brain does it on just about every level when somebody walks into the room, are they younger than me? Are they slimmer than me? Are they prettier than me? Are they stronger than me? Are they bigger than me? Are they more powerful than me? Are they wealthier than me? Are they better looking than me? The human brain goes to a million different places. And the crazy thing is, is that's how, to some degree, we know ourselves. We are constantly contrasting and comparing. When you start to create a business, you start to contrast and compare. And one of the most interesting things about being a photographer in business is you're going to see other photographers around you that are not maybe as good as you, but doing a lot better than you. And the first place you go is to the ego. And the ego says, why? Why is that person more successful than me when I am a better photographer and I'm a better artist and I'm a better person and I'm a better speaker and I am a better whatever? And straight away, you need to look at what it is that you think that that person has that you do not have. So I learned a long time ago, whenever I felt envy or jealousy, I looked at the person that I was envying or felt jealous of, and I asked myself, what is it about this person that I think I want? What is it that I perceive that this person has that I think I want? Because truly, it is a reflection of what I think is lacking in me at that moment. I sort of developed that over years until now I don't feel it as much at all. And if I do see it, I flag it instantly and say, what is it about this person? Now flip that in the reverse. Let's say you're having a really good run, you're doing really well in your business, you're posting lots of shoots that you're super proud of, that you're doing really well, and all of a sudden you get trolled by someone who wants to take you down a peg or two. And this happens a lot. Rule number one when you're building an audience, and I've built a really big following in the last five years, and I've been managing my own social media on my own, hundreds of thousands of people, and I learned that everybody's gonna have an opinion and it's okay. It only hurts when it holds a truth about us that we don't want to see, acknowledge, or bring to the light. And sometimes that truth can be really hurtful, and other times it's simply a small truth, we see it, we acknowledge it. So before you react and respond, remove yourself from the situation for at least an hour. If you don't want the comment or the opinion on your profile or page, simply swipe and delete it. 
You have the power to remove anybody's comment from your social media, and that's not a problem. Before you start arguing, defending, fighting, or blocking people, because if you do that, you're coming from an energy of defensiveness, and it's only gonna breed more fighting. So don't feed the trolls is one of the first things I learned. Then I learned if I don't wanna see the comment, or I don't wanna face it, or I don't need my clients to see it, or I don't want other people following me to see it, I have the power to delete it, but I don't have the power to delete it instantly from my mind and sometimes my heart and soul. I learned that sometimes people will attack you and criticize you on different levels. And the truth is, is it only hurts you when there's some truth to it for you. For instance, one day I was having an incredibly great month. I was connected in my social media. I was getting lots of support. Maybe somebody looked at me and thought, why does she have so much support? She's not that good. I'm going to attack her and that's fine. They went after me publicly and they wrote a really horrendously nasty thing about me. They criticized my age, my weight, and my, at the time, single status. And when I read it, I was instantly hurt by it. I was hurt by it because it had some truth for me. And I always say to people, as you start to build a profile, a business profile, and a name for yourself, somebody's going to take a shot at you. And it's going to be, the hurt is gonna be in direct proportion to how much truth that criticism holds for you. So now I step back, if I don't want it there, I delete it. And how I process it in my personal self is, is there truth in this comment? And is this truth, does this truth hurt me? And why does this truth hurt me? You know, I realized a long time ago that sometimes the most hurtful comments you can process actually pretty quickly. The best business advice I ever got given was manage your disappointment. You know, many people will disappoint you in business. A client will not buy and disappoint you. A coworker will let you down and disappoint you. A staff member will let you down and disappoint you. A spouse will criticize you. A family member will criticize you. Who do you think you are? You can't charge that much. You're not worth this. It only means something to you when you hold some of that truth. So sometimes it's really good to hear the reflection of the criticism, bring it into yourself, sit with it for a while and say, is this my truth? Do I say this to myself? Because sometimes a lot of what people say is your dark side being said out loud for all the public to see and hear. The truth is when it comes to comparison is there is always somebody going to be better than you. There is somebody that's always going to be younger, faster, stronger, better looking, wealthier, better photographer, better at speaking. There's always somebody that's gonna be better than you and that's okay. I only have to be good enough for my clients and myself. Uh, there's always gonna be someone that criticizes you, maybe attacks you, but try always to come up a level. Try to always look down on the situation as the big picture Always look at the mirror back to you. So something that I teach all of my students is what's called mirror, mirror. Mirror, mirror on the wall. What is the reflection of this criticism to me? And is it a reflection to me at all? Is really, really important. Uh, then you can process it and move on and manage your disappointment for a shorter amount of time and just say, hey, I am a business owner and I'm a leader in my community. I am a leader in my field. And sometimes I'm going to have to make hard decisions. Sometimes I'm going to have to stand up and I'm going to have to back myself up. A lot of the time you can feel really isolated and you can feel really punched in the throat when you get a bit of criticism. Sometimes a client can turn against you and you need to manage that disappointment as quickly as you can. The truth is, is it's very easy when your clients love your work to tell a few people, but when they hate you for some reason, or if your job has gone wrong, or if the relationship has broken down in any way, they're gonna to go to social media. And that is the power of the voice of social media. If somebody wants to get attention, they can speak up against you very quickly also. 
This is why it's very important to diffuse any situations that you find yourself in and to roll over. It's so much easier to roll over but learn the lesson from it so it doesn't happen again, so it doesn't happen to you again. You know, I've learned more about myself as a business owner than any lesson that I've learned in my life. And I deal every day with being a public figure now in my industry. But even before I became a speaker and a teacher uh, or an educator, I was still a business owner. I still found that to some degree that was happening to me online, either from other photographers, other photographers in my area, just drive by, uh, you know, people surfing the web that just want to tell you you're not doing your best work today. Um, whatever it is, it's going to hurt for a small amount of time and then you're going to recover. So handle it with grace because you're in business and you're building a reputation and that reputation is more important than fighting back. I found probably the hardest thing was that I couldn't fight back, was sometimes I wanted to come out like a true Kiwi girl fighting, fists up, she stands for the fist, don't talk about me like that, don't say this about me, I wanted to defend myself, I felt backed into a corner and I felt very strongly that I wanted to stand up and speak out. But the truth is, is nothing is gained by holding this energy, not on your Facebook group, not on your page, nothing is gained in any way, shape or form. The only way is to accept it with grace, let it go with grace. Um, in terms of being good enough, that's really what you're saying when you're comparing yourself. You're lost in validation instead of service. How I got away from the need to be validated was I turned all of my energy instead of needing to be validated or needing somebody else to tell me I'm good enough, I started to focus all of my energy on giving service. You know, it's a really interesting shift, but when you stop trying to sell your work and start giving service, you start looking at the world as instead of being not enough clients for me, you start looking at the world as a whole lot of clients out there that need me to give them my product and service and my expertise and my love and attention. You start looking at clients as being something you, someone you can give to and serve instead of someone that hopefully will pay you. And remember that this is probably the biggest lesson that I, te that I teach people. It is the energy with which you work that attracts clients. So if your energy is desperation and needing to be paid, that emotional current is stronger than anything you're doing or saying. So sometimes you don't realize how stinky you are when you're marketing yourself and selling yourself and your business, you're just busy trying to be paid and get validated. So all of your energy is being projected out as, I need money, I'm struggling, I need to pay my rent this month, instead of an energy of giving I'm a portrait photographer, you need beautiful corporate personal branding, headshots, um, I can give that to you, you need beautiful family portraits, I can serve you, I am a service provider. So I feel like there's a lot of personal work that needs to be done here and I see it time and time again, particularly with artists learning to value themselves. We spend all this time trying to be good enough, trying to compare trying to be validated instead of giving incredible service. I started my business, my, my own um, self-employed business in 2001. I called my business you, Y-O-U, photography. And when everybody asked me why I called it you and not Sue Bryce, uh, two reasons. One is I had this very strong feeling back then that I was going to build a business that I could sell and I knew I couldn't sell my own name. Um, of course, now I'm Sue Bryce Portrait. Uh, I also felt back then that it wasn't about me and that if I wrote SueBryce.com, I was somehow making me the main star in my show. And when I first started out, I felt very strongly that I wanted to project an energy of this is about you, that this service is about you, this product is about what I can create for you, of you. And I really shifted my energy into needing money, into looking for clients that needed my service. And it's a very different way in which you work and attract and do business 
when you are offering a service that people need because being paid is an equal balance of the service provided. I feel very strongly about this. In fact, I've seen it too many times to know that it's not the truth. I know it is the whole truth with how you work. Um, Any time that I started to go backwards in my business or maybe my shoots would drain away, I would become disconnected, overworked, uh, I started to cookie cut meaning I stopped really serving my clients and I started to dial it in. The fastest way to lose money is to dial it in. The second you feel like you're dialing it in, you're not working with any form of passion or joy. You're simply going to work, you're cookie cutting shoots and you're getting a little bit exhausted and maybe you just need to stop and take some time away. You know, I always say, The fastest way to make money is to be fully invested in the service that you're giving. Ask your clients how they want to be photographed and then deliver that product. And you have to deliver on what you promise. So anytime my sales start to go down, anytime my average sale drops, anytime my shoots drop away from my studio, the first question I ask is this, what's wrong? I'm either not connected to my client I'm either not doing that initial consultation where I'm really selling myself and my experience, I'm either not connected to the service that I'm giving, so I'm overworked, dialing it in, don't really care, not really giving my client 100% time and attention, or I'm not delivering on the product and service that I promised. Those three things instantly show up in your income. Whenever people tell me that they're going backwards or something's not working, it was working but it's not now, I instantly ask them, are you connected? Are you giving service? And are you you working from that place of enthusiasm and joy? Or are you dialing it in and therefore not connecting? And are you delivering the product and service that you say you're going to deliver when they first met you or when they first did their consultation? I can guarantee you've dropped the ball in one of those three areas. So, This is not about comparison. Comparison is competitiveness and competition is the opposite to creation. Creation is joyful and magical. It is connected and it truly is the place where you can make things happen in your business by simply attracting. It's really quite amazing. Competition is cruel and it's comparison it will cut you off, it will cut your income. It's when you're more worried about yourself than the people that you're creating a product for. You know, I spent many years stuck in competitiveness and I realized that what I was doing was my ego was crying out to grow and my ego was crying out for validation and my ego was crying out to be told that I was good enough. You are good enough but not working from competition. From competition, you're never going to be good enough because someone will always be better. So bring it back to creativity, bring it back to service, bring it back to giving with an equal exchange and learn, please learn to receive money for your craft. Because when you give from a place of joy and love, when you truly service your client, you will get paid and you will receive the money for it because it is an equal exchange for what you have given. And that is what you are worth as a business owner and as a photographer. 